High school basketball action tonight on WOSN. Lima Central Catholic hosting the Allen East Mustangs. T-Birds basketball here from Bob Sagerson Court on inside of Air Gymnasium, the 20th anniversary of the opening of this wonderful place to watch basketball. And it is basketball time here on WOSN. Hello again, everyone. I'm Patrick Hamler joining alongside Mark Shine, and we are ready for basketball action. 20 years ago, this place was opened, and guess what? It was LCC Allen East then, too. It was. They, they jerked the schedule around a little bit. They had Jackson Center on the schedule. They wanted to open up with more local team. They were able to move Jackson Center out of this particular game and bring the Mustangs in. Mustangs will be in black uniforms tonight, too. So Allen East opening up their second game of the season for the T-Birds. Uh, this is their third. First one outside of the tip-off classic, so they've had uh, just about a full week off. Allen East playing this past Tuesday, victorious over Ridgemont. And looking forward to uh, what should be a competitive basketball game. At least, of course, when we're broadcasting games, we always hope that they are competitive. And we are underway. DeMar Foster controlling the basketball for the T-Birds. And quickly, the first shot up and no good. Billy Burke putting it up. Well, they right away went inside to Burke. Burke stands better than 6'6". The tallest Mustang is just 6'2", so they wanted to go inside early. T-Birds with a definite size advantage. You look up and down the roster, and Lima Central Catholic is, is taller. They're going to have that advantage. So Alanis is going to have to be quicker, more athletic, and of course, like anything else, hit your shots. Hensley driving inside and puts up the first basket of the night for the Mustangs. Hensley made it work to his favor. He's 5'11", but he had Burke on the perimeter, and he was able to get around him to score. Here's Carson Parker from downtown. Front off the iron, no good. Carson Clum with the rebound. LCC was outstanding defensively in the tip-off classic last week and held Bath to 31, Shawnee to 42. Coach Powell puts a lot of emphasis on his pack line defense, and uh, he's done a good job of teaching it. We're going to go the other way with this one. I can say he was pointing towards the Mustangs and then reverse course and gave it to LCC. Sean Powell in his first year at the helm of Lima Central Catholic, replacing longtime head coach Frank Kill. And Sean Powell coming over from Bath. Before that, he was at Botkins where he won a state title. We covered their run to the state championship on WOSN. Good jump out on the screen right there. Because the Mustangs are all similar in size, they're able to switch whenever they choose. Here's Burke working inside against triple coverage. Couldn't get that one to go. Clum with another rebound. Carson Clum, one of the senior leaders on this basketball team, the 5'9". Kick out. That's from downtown, no good. And Logan Helzer with the rebound and the foul. Helzer in their game against Ridgemont was their, their main source inside for buckets and really for free throws. He was a guy that was drawing a lot of contact, getting to the line, and I think was just about perfect from the charity stripe on Tuesday. Mustangs control the basketball. Hensley has it. Driving inside. This is Young kick out to Helzer. Now Hensley has it at the top of the key, and they'll reset. Two minutes gone by in this first quarter. Three ball on the way by Ethan Young in that 20th Century Lanes three-pointer is good. That was a deep three, give them a 5-0 lead. Very patient on offense to get the look they wanted. Here's Foster driving in, kicking out. Parker from downtown, no good. Burke with the rebound. Foster, another three ball on the way, no good. Parker trying to tip it in. And Burke, another opportunity and a foul. You can see him pounding the offensive glass. They have not made a field goal yet, but they had three offensive rebounds on that possession. Once you get into the, the you missed the first one, it's so hard to get checkouts on those second and third shot opportunities, and he was just able to progress. So we're seeing that. That size get in there as the first Artie Jones excavating free throw is up and good. Gabe Young's team, 1-0, 71-59 win over Richmond. Burke makes both free throws. Burke perfect from the line so far for the season, 5-2 LCC. 
See Willie Foster matched up out front with Carson Klum. And now DeMar Foster has it. Good defense there by the Thunderbirds. Allen East not having a lot of daylight to work with. Klum with the pull up and knocks it down. Boy, that was really nice. A dribble move to about 12 feet and just rose up and shot it over his defender before he was prepared to defend. That was nice. First basket by Klum, seven to two. And right there, the 20th Century Lanes three-pointer put up by DeMar Foster to make it, it five, seven to five. Isn't it nice to see DeMar Foster on the court again? Two seasons with leg injury problems. Good to have you back out for his senior year. Without a doubt, Helzer a little too far behind the backboard on that one. And play is stopped, and Helzer is going to pick up his second. So Helzer is going to likely head to the bench, and that is size that the Mustangs can ill afford to give up as Grant Slusser, the 6'3 junior, will come in. So they will have another big man able to come in there, but Helzer has been the guy that sees a lot of the minutes. Almost halfway through the quarter, three line changes for Sean Powell's team as well. They're gonna run a little high post action here. Angelo Collins with the ball. Parker Judy, Matthew Quatman in, and it's Quatman with the basketball. Parker Judy can fat, flat light it up from the three point line. Without a doubt. Foster thought about the three, takes it in strong off the left hand on the glass. So quick off the dribble and able to use his left hand to get the ball high off the glass. He has five of the first seven points now for the Thunderbirds. And after a 7-2 lead, it is tied up at seven. Here on Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. And that ball tipped out, last touched by the Mustangs. Second turnover for Allen Easton. Just like we saw in the tip-off classic, this uh, Thunderbird basketball team does not turn the basketball over. And what do we got? So we've got a stoppage, and Parker Judy was. Said the floor was slippery, I believe. I was going to say, look, like he was pointing over there, so they're going to get a towel. To... The towel or a napkin. <laughs> Might be the smallest <laughs> towel I've seen. Right, yeah. <laughs> to wipe up a floor on you. You do what you can with what you have. I feel like you usually see, you know, bigger pieces of cloth or a mop or something like that to clear that stuff off, but. Well, hey, see, no referee wants to use the mop because then their wife expects them to do it at home. <laughs> so you don't do that. And with the game on WOSN, it's like now we yeah. have televised proof that you know how to work that thing. 2-2-1 two, two, zone press, Mustangs. A bit of a trap yeah. and Evan, some a foul there is Grant Slusser. Picks up his first. Now Grant couldn't get his foot to the sideline in time to take the charge legally, so he becomes a blocking foul and third team foul. Three thirty left in the first quarter, all tied up at seven. Angelo Collins working and passes back out. Here's Foster, three ball on the way, no good. Klum rebounds and getting it from among the Redwoods there and then promptly stolen away by Parker Judy. Good job of following the play and trailing it for Parker Judy and not giving up on it so he gets his hands on the steal. Now Parker has it. Double team for a moment. Now Foster drives baseline pass to Collins back into his hands. Judy from downtown, and that 20th Century Lanes three-pointer is up and good. Saw him do this last weekend at the light of tip-off, especially in the Friday game. He was just deadly from the perimeter, gives his team a three-point lead. 8-0 run for the T-Birds, and they have a 10-7 lead, as you said. Klum looking to penetrate. Here's a long three ball, no good by Ethan Young. Foster into the basketball game. Really was a starter, had a little bit of a break there right around the 420 mark. Little back and forth passing, and now it's Foster. He takes it strong up with the right hand. Scored by number one, Willie Foster. 
Alvarez having trouble keeping Willie and DeMar Foster out of the lane. 10-0 run for Lima Central Catholic. Five-point lead for the T-Birds with under two minutes to go in the first quarter. And this one is going to go back to LCC. Fourth turnover with Parker Judy back in the game along with Jordan Pretty. Real size advantage now to LCC because Burke looks about 6'6", six, six, and Angelo Collins is 6'3", or 4". Yeah, That's that size advantage that we mentioned very early on, and it has been working. There's Pretty with a nice take, spin move, and draws contact. It's becoming a bit of a broken record the last couple, three possessions that the Thunderbirds were able to get into the lane with dribble drive, penetration. Can't shoot this one until there's a Alanis Mustang on the lane. There you go. Nope, got to have baseline's got to be covered. Oops. That baseline block is supposed to be held. There we go. The official's going to make him get a guy in there. <laughs> uh, legally, you're not supposed to shoot a free throw until you have at least the bottom space, two spaces filled. Looks like they got it squared away now. Pretty at the line. Artie Jones excavating free throw is up and good. Eleven nothing run for LCC in the first quarter. That free throw no good. Of course, these two teams, Patrick, will be in the same league next year. Indeed, they will. I'm a Central Catholic back in the Northwest Conference. I think that's so good for young men and, and young women in the female part of that conference. Fifth turnover. You, you like to have an opportunity to compete for league championships where every every weekend you're playing a big game against a, a league opponent, uh, all league honors. When you get all league honors, it makes it easier to get all district and all state mm -hmm. honors because you're recognized by a league. I, I just think, and, and obviously then the, the closest the proximity of games as opposed to lengthy travel, I, I'm really happy LCC has found yeah. a league to play in. Yeah, it just makes all the games mean more. I mean, every game you want to win, you want to compete, of course, but it just makes the environment so much more fun when there's conference stuff on the line, when there's a rival in the conference that you're playing, and Lima Central Catholic is going to get to experience that. Angelo Collins working underneath and puts up two more, 15 to 7 LCC. Yeah, you mentioned work, and he certainly did. He just backed his defender down and was able to jump over him and score them. A little bit more strength, a little bit more size. It's all that in our East Side Insurance instant replay as we come up under 35 seconds in this first quarter. Strong take there by Young. Couldn't get it. And a travel is going to be called against LCC. Yeah, Burke came down with the ball in traffic, but was off balance a little bit because of all the traffic around him. And then traveled trying to get, get him in a better position to make a pass. Clum to inbound with 30.4 remaining in the first quarter. Three ball is long. Scrum for the basketball, picked up by the Mustangs. Jones gets it back. And the hands of Young, and now Clum will hold for a final shot. 12 seconds left in the first quarter. See if he gets a high ball screen here. Well, Maybe here's our new foul, foul rule, Patrick. You know, they've only had one team foul in the half. We might as well go out and foul them and disrupt whatever play you're going to see because we're not going to have a a one and one type situation, and we're going to erase all those team fouls in the next 7.2 seconds anyway. Right, that's absolutely right. So each team gets four fouls before they had to head to the line, and no more one and ones anymore. It's two fouls, or it's two free throws rather, after that fifth foul. And as Mark said, they reset. So, you know, why not use a foul? I still uh, haven't judged yet. There is again, not, not sure how I feel about this new rule and how it's going to play out over the course of the season. I saw one quarter last night last more than 25 minutes simply because there were so many fouls in that particular quarter and some, some turnovers and some dead ball, you know, some situations occurred beside that, but it really took a long time to play one quarter yeah. because there were so many two shot fouls. Saw that a little bit in the fourth quarter of Allen East game against Ridgemont on Tuesday where the game was moving pretty well and Allen East had a a pretty sizable lead, but still they were fouling. Here in the final seconds, Clum drives in, and we're going to have another foul. 
You know what? And he, it went in. Columbus trying to there argue you their go. continuation. I was, well, I was thinking that was going to happen, Patrick. He called that an intentional foul. And yes, the he did. reason right. was Clum had a beat, and he reached out and grabbed his shirt and yanked him backwards, and obviously intentional foul to keep him from getting a shot opportunity. So this will be two shots for the Mustangs, plus the ball out of bounds with 2.1 seconds remaining. That's a really good call right there by the official. And Clum can't connect on the first R.D. Jones excavating free throw. The ball will be taken out of bounds at what they call point of interruption. The place on the floor closest to where the action came to a stop. Clum unsuccessful on both, but the Mustangs will get possession. And you think on the LCC side, like, wow, all the fouling, is this going to really pay off? And so far, it, uh, it just might. 2.1. Jones drives, puts it up at the buzzer, and no good. One in the books here from LCC. Sagerson Court, it's 15 to 7. Lima Central Catholic on top. Second quarter coming up after this. You are watching high school basketball action on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard tonight sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. And our instant replay sponsor tonight is Eastside Insurance, dedicated to providing the best insurance protection at the most reasonable price to as many people as possible. Second quarter ready to get started, 15 to seven. Lima Central Catholic on top. In the opening quarter, Allen East two for five from the two point area, one for four from outside the arc. They missed both their free throw opportunities. Allen East has seven rebounds. Two of them were offensive, and they turned the basketball over five times. Lima Central Catholic, they were three of six from two-point range, two of six from outside the arc. They made three of their four free throw opportunities. They had six rebounds. Three of those were offensive, and they turned the ball over just once in the opening quarter. Lima Central Catholic on a 13-0 run right now. That's how they ended the quarter. And Allen East has not been able to get much of a rhythm going on offense since the opening moments of the first quarter and their last opportunities here have not paid off yet. So now we'll see what they can do here as we have a brand new quarter to start. Coach Powell used several players at the end of the quarter to draw those fouls that we talked about. Nice guys, pretty much the starting lineup back in the game and there's a turnover. Trying to feed that pass into Hensley, who's back in. Instead, Carson Parker has it. He has it slapped away, but stays with it. Up off the glass and in. Did he have the ball was knocked loose from him. He's kept chugging, chugging along towards the rim and almost a turnover. Clum able to get it back. Passes inside. Hensley connects. A much needed basket and assist Clum. Back the other way, three-pointer by Willie Foster at 20th Century Lane's three-pointer, and T-Birds up 20 to nine. It's one of those attack the defense before it's prepared to defend. It was not necessarily a transition basket, but it is because you've got a three-point opportunity to clean shot before the defenders were prepared. Brady Brooks in the game. There's a nice backdoor play. Getting that in there, number 21, Hunter Nichols coming in for the first time, 20 to 11. That's a really nice pass also. Drew the defender to him in the middle of the lane. Nice bounce pass to a teammate for a basket. Foster once again from downtown, that one in and out. Showing the ability to really stroke the ball from the wing. There's a turnover, turnover number seven for Al Neeson. That's a difficult one because that was not a forced turnover. A little high on the pass to Brooks yeah. there. and The positive is it's a dead ball turnover. You're not seeing LCC run out in transition, but th that was a turnover the coach would rather not have. Parker distributes back out. Jordan Pretty and the foul. Four-point play coming up for Lima Central Catholic. Really pretty looking jump shot that time. It was high, it was soft. And then the contact that came to the line to go to the free throw line. 
First foul on Trey Hensley. And now it's R.D. Jones excavating free throw up and good. So the four point play, but the last thing Allen East needed to have happen, LCC with a 24 to 11 lead. Ethan Young working against Willie Foster, almost had the ball tapped away. He did have it tapped away for a moment. And see, this yeah. is Jones cutting in, and he's... The illegal screen, yep. Ethan Young was moving as he tried to get a clean screen, and his teammate didn't help him out very much by using his screen properly, so he had to kind of work his way to make the screen happen and got caught for the foul. First foul on Young, team second. Here at Bob Sagerson Court. Had a chance to talk to Bob a little bit during the JV game. Always enjoy speaking with him. Bob continuing to be a terrific su supporter of LCC Athletics. Carson Parker puts Carson that one Parker. in. He has four points and a 15-point lead for LCC. An offensive rebound. That's the fourth one of the game. Gives them more points in the, in the paint area. Three ball is long. Parker with the rebound. Three on one for the T-Birds and Pretty with the pretty shot. And a Metzger Financial Services timeout. As Coach Gabe Young needs to talk this over. 5.07 remaining here in the second quarter. It's all LCC, 28 to 11. You are watching high school basketball action on WOSN. Welcome back to tonight's free throw sponsor is R.D. Jones Excavating. Serving your excavating needs for over 50 years. Visit R.D. Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavation project for your home or business. Good luck to all area athletes and go Mustangs. And our three-point sponsor tonight, 20th Century Lanes. There's something for everyone at 20th Century Lanes. Proud supporter of all Lima area athletes. 28 to 11, Lima Central Catholic on top of Allen East. Just about three minutes gone by in the second quarter, and Allen East had a nice 7-2 to start, but really it's been at Lima Central Catholic ever since. Well, I think that they've gotten a little bit hasty on some of their shot selection. The last one was, and you miss a three-point field goal like that, it's cleanly rebounded, and you set yourself up for a transition basket at the other end, and LCC took advantage of that. Let's see if uh, the Mustangs can settle down a little bit here and get into their offense like they did in the opening quarter. Pass to Brooks. Now Brooks taking it in, shot up off balance, and Logan Helzer comes back in. He had to sit early with two fouls. Good fight for the offensive rebound that time. And now Helzer working inside and puts that one up and in. That's an element of their game that they were missing in the late first quarter. Well, when you're allowed to get uh, Carson Klum into the free throw lane area and let him make an assist pass, he's very, very talented at that. Foster pulls up from 16, high off the rim and no good. Helzer with the rebound. Klum brings it up, stops, pops, three-pointer no good. Hensley trying to get the rebound, but Brooks corrals it, puts that one in, no good. Helzer hit, back out. Klum thinks about it, his shot off balance, and that one is out of bounds, and it will stay down here with Allen East. So the Mustangs able to get some additional opportunities instead yep. of one and done there, but they're still having problems putting the ball in the basket. They came out of that timeout really working to get to the offensive glass. Nice inbounds play. Potentially and swatted away yeah. by Carson Parker. He was sitting on that one, wasn't he? He indeed was. Two on two. Pretty up and in. And the foul. Basket good by number zero. Able to get out in Jordan transition. Green. Close call. Block charges off and are. That's the third foul on Logan Helzer. Yeah. Third team foul. So that's probably going to send Helzer to the bench again. At will, Grant Slusser will come in. 
Jordan Pretty came into the game averaging nine and a half points per game. He's at nine right now, looking at ten at the foul line. This R.D. Jones excavating free throw is good. Coach Powell's going to take a timeout. T-Birds taking a Metro Financial Services timeout. 347 left in the first half. We'll be back. Welcome back to nice timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services. Helping you plan your financial future, call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. I think here at LCC they must have a building program going because the students are keeping track of a, on the board down here of bricks. Either that or they're being cold and cruel towards their opponents here this evening. I'm going to, since it's a student section, I'm going to option toward cold and cruel. Although I think that was pregame. I haven't seen it updated during the game. Uh, that, could be. that would be a little mean. Not that I would put student here's, sections. Here's the 2-2-1 two, two, zone press that, That's that LCC was so good at last week at the tip-off classic. They have made offense very uncomfortable for Allen East the entire what game. And now Club trying to distribute, and there's a foul. Just a little wraparound pass. Took the ball under the arms of the defender and drew contact. If there hadn't been contact, there was going to be a layup on the back side of that. So Parker Judy has assessed the foul. That's his first, team's first, as we've got 3.34 remaining here in the first half. This is Jones driving inside, off balance, no good. Back the other way, Parker was all by himself for a moment and off balance and still gets that one in. And I'll tell you, it's been a microcosm of the night for the T-Birds. Here's Brooks back the other way and gets the nice touch. Haven't been very many opportunities to go in transition for Al East, but they did right there. And that will be stripped off of Foster. Just a second turnover for LCC. And say Mustang basketball. And some substitutions. Young coming, checking in for Hensley. Collins back in along with Burke for LCC with Quatman, Parker, and Foster. Under three minutes to go. 33-15, Lima Central Catholic on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Brooks, his shot blocked. Just over-penetrated that time. Too much size for the Thunderbirds. And Billy Burke laboring a little bit. Looks like he got maybe popped in the face or something. And he's still out there as Quatman lets go from downtown. That one no good. Clum on the run. Stops and pops the charity stripe. That one off the mark. And out of bounds, last touched by Clum. Well, when he pulled up and released that, I thought that was a really nice move. It just shot the ball to the side of the rim a little bit. Got himself open right about the 15-foot area. And that pull-up jumper looked nice, but uh, was off the mark. You say when the numbers are against you on a drive like that, the, the smart thing to do is just to pull up at a good high percentage place and let it go. And that's what Clum did. Unfortunately, just couldn't get it to go. That three-point shot is no good. Rebounded by Jones. Young working inside. His shot, no good. Willie Foster comes up with it. Now back the other way. Poked away from Parker Judy. And now Clum has it as we are under two minutes to go in the first half. Clump setting up, here's Jones from downtown. That's no good. Clump kicks out, Brooks from way downtown and that's off the mark. BT Bird basketball and Al East now one of eight from the three point line. Like the Thunderbirds are, looks like they're four of 11 right now. LCC having some more success downtown than Allen East is. Now here's Judy kicking out. 
Malachi Talbert into the game for LCC, and now he has the basketball. He'll take a three-point shot. That one is short off the front iron. Long pass to Hensley back in. His floating shot is off the mark. Had two defenders got back quickly that time for the Thunderbirds and had to rush his layup opportunity a bit. Parker Judy lets that one go, and that one's nice off the rebound. front. Indeed, Collins getting up for the rebound on that one, and they're going to get him for the travel. Really went up strong to secure the rebound. And then when he wanted to make his spin move, his footwork wasn't correct. A really good offensive rebound. Lima Central Catholic has outscored Allen East 18 to 8 here in the second quarter. Clum, kick out, Jones, shot. <laughs> Quabu was standing out of bounds and he realized he tried to jump and make it look like he was in bounds. <laughs> Pretty heads up play for him. Whole, whole time, whole time, I'm ref. Fine, I'm fine. <laughs> that young man is a real competitor. Really enjoyed him on the, the football field this year. A solid basketball a year, a year ago for them, too. And when you're wearing bright orange shoes like he is, you really can't be subtle about those things. Nice pull-up jumper. Clump oh. pulls up around the rim and out. He's had some good looks he's created for himself that have not gone down for him. Here is Foster from downtown. That one no good. Pretty there for the rebound. His shot blocked. Final seconds of the first half. Clum distributing. Jones counted in the foul. That was a good transition basket that time. A long three at the LCC end turns into a run out. And they get a good look, a chance to go to the free throw line with four seconds to go here before halftime. If anything, it'll be something positive Allen East can hang their hat on, maybe build towards in the second half as this has been a pretty convincing quarter on the side of the Thunderbirds. 18 to 10 quarter going right now, pending this free throw and how the last four seconds goes. So Jones comes in. For the RD Jones free throw, no good. Final seconds, Parker will throw it up. And that is one half in the books from Segerson Court here at Hare Gymnasium. It's halftime here at LCC 33-17, the home team on top. Back for the second half when we come back on WOSN. Welcome back, halftime wrapping up here at LCC. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's famous recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphi, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken, home style, happens here. It's a 33-17 lead for Lima Central Catholic over Allen East. Patrick Hamler, Mark Shine here with you. And LCC has been, well, pretty dominant in the first and second quarter so yeah, far. Yeah, if you look at their stat numbers, LCC is eight of 14 from inside the arc, four of 14 from outside it. They've made five of six free throws. On the other side, Allen East just seven of 21 from two-point range, one of nine from three-point range, and they missed all three of their free throws. Both teams have 19 rebounds. Allen East has eight offensive, LCC six. Turnovers went to LCC. They had eight and just four for LCC. LCC had a 15-0 run between the first and second quarters, and that has helped stake them out to this 16-point lead as we get the third quarter underway as both sides switch sides, and Willie Foster getting it started in style for LCC. He came off that screen and just turned the corner and went to the rim. The defense couldn't stop him. Quick. Logan Helzer back in for Allen East with three fouls. Clum driving in, and that's last touched by the T-Birds. Demar Foster knocked it out of bounds as he was giving up, giving up baseline, but was able to get a hand on the ball and knock it out of bounds. Really good half for Jordan Pretty, 10 points, a lot of them in transition. He struggled a little bit to free throw line to tip off classic, but not today. Now here's Clum driving, kicking. Ensley trying to save it and into the hands of Demar Foster. 
Foster kicks out pretty from downtown. 20th Century Lane's three-pointer is up and good. He's having a really good basketball game this evening. That was a nice pass, and he had it, caught it right in his shooting pocket and took it up and scored. 21-point lead for the Thunderbirds. And Jones thought about the three-pointer top of the key. Run some continuity right now coming out of the halftime break. Ethan Young looking for some space, penetrates in. Doesn't get it, but fouled. I think that'll go to Willie Foster, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. That's Foster's first, team's first, and Lyman, or, uh, Alan East, rather, still looking for their first free throw of the night. This R.G. Jones free throw is short. They are 0 for 4 from there this evening. Another free throw, R.G. Jones free throw is no good. Make that 0 for 5. Foster throwing it up and almost thundering it down is Foster, but it stays with LCC. Now Foster with the three-pointer in the corner. That one is long. Pretty with the rebound. Gets it, puts it back up, no good. Crashing the boards are the Thunderbirds using their size to their advantage tonight. And now Foster... Stops, pops, that one is short. Burks saves it. I thought saved it from going out of bounds, but it will be Allen East basketball. Yeah, there we talked about their size. Burke that time was checked out well. And when that occurred, he went through the back of the defender to create the foul. What were they acting on the offensive boards that possession? Without a shadow of a doubt, and we uh, talked about the, you mentioned the size advantage, and again, you know, don't want to, beat that to death, but one of the things that we thought coming into this matchup was the just the size at LCC, the advantage they had over Allen East was going to make things difficult, and if Allen East was going to hit their shots and be uh, effective on offense, that one knocked away, then you thought Allen East had a pretty good shot in this one, but the shots just haven't fallen tonight, and it's resulted in a 21-point lead right now for LCC. I think one of the reasons those shots have not fallen very well is how well T-Birds have defended for most every possession. Clum back with it. A little over two minutes gone by in the third quarter. Here's Young for three. No good. Now Young penetrates off balance. That shot doesn't go. LCC with another rebound. Now Jones playing tough on Foster and ran into Young. And that will be his second. Parker Judy back into the basketball game. He's going to replace Willie Foster. Pretty inbounds. And that foul, or that ball will be waved off as the foul assessed to Carson Klum. That's going to be his first. Carson Klum, Carson Klum kind of stuck his hand in the cookie jar that time. The ball was presented in front of his face. He thought he could get a steal, but got armed instead. Fast guard doing fast guard things. Pretty shot, no good. Sometimes you think you can just poke your arm out there and cause disruption. A lot of times you can, but also sometimes they uh, they whistle you for that. Look at Helser with a good check out the last time and got a rebound for his team. That shot no good. Now quickly down the other way come the Thunderbirds. Now here's Parker working it inside off the left hand around the rim and no good. You see Burke just using his size to his advantage. Pretty three-pointer no good. Last touch by the T-Birds. Billy Burke has done his job offensive rebounding wise tonight. Got a second chance opportunity from the corner for George Pretty, but the ball was a shot a little bit long and then Carson Parker battling for the offense. Rebound had to go off his hand. So the scoring has slowed down a bit here yes, in the second yes. quarter. Only uh, two field goals for LCC, but so far nothing for Allen East here in the third. There's a Burke block shot. Indeed. Out of bounds. That one will stay over here with the Mustangs. Pretty will have a seat. Quatman will take his place.
Young stops and pops in their charity stripe. And that one is off the mark. Coming up on the halfway point of this third quarter, it's a 38-17 LCC lead on the Leeds Fearings Recipe Chicken scoreboard. 5-0 LCC this quarter as neither team mm -hmm. can get untracked offensively. There's Burke open inside. Burke working against Helzer. He kicks it out. Quatman works it around to Parker Judy. That three-pointer is short. He had to spin to catch the ball and didn't get it in his shooting pocket. Clum trying a little bit of a finger roll and can't get it to go, but the ball will stay down here with Allen East as Brady Brooks checks in for the Mustangs. Angelo Collins and Billy Burke have made quite a pair on the interior. You always have one of the two on the floor. Sometimes they both play. Collins just replaced Burke. Here is Jones taking it in and getting it to go. First bucket of the third quarter for Allen East. Took them four plus minutes to get there against this LCC defense. Because they haven't been able to score, they've not been able to set up full court pressure. Foster drive and kick. And Judy is fouled. You can see the defense rush to Parker Judy that time because he is known as a, a three point shooter. That time he put it on the floor, went around his defender, and drew the foul. They called that on Trey Hensley. That's his second. Team's third, and here's Klum with it on the other side and gets that one to go. I liked how Carson Parker ran back defensively. You know, sometimes you lose the basketball, somebody picks your pocket, and you, you get down a little bit, you don't chase him down. But he went after him and made it difficult to make that layup. That's only the third time tonight Alan East has had back-to-back -back buckets on possessions. Kick out, here's Parker from downtown. That one's short. LCC made four of their first seven three-point field goals and five of their first nine, but they have struggled from the three-point area since then. They are just a five of 21 on the game. Brooks getting it around to Jones. Allen East down 17, 242 remaining in the third quarter. That one floated up off the side of the backboard. Helzer with the rebound. He tries to put it up in, that doesn't go. Rebound T-Birds, off and running. Here's Pretty, he has that one slapped away by Klum, but the T-Birds maintain possession. Looking for Collins underneath and a foul. Well, Brady Brooks got inside at 5'8". He got matched up with Collins and he was wrestling with him, trying to keep him from posting up inside and finally got called for the foul. I mean, you got to appreciate how hard the young man worked to try to keep the ball in the bigger player's hands and then he got called for foul number four. You have to have some appreciation for a 5'8 guy in the post. You might get the ball, but I'm going to battle you. Helzer and Jones having a seat as Grant Slusser checking back in for Allen East. See Collins trying to post up against Slusher. Both of young men about 6'3". And now Foster. Pretty. Kicks it back out. Quatman for three. That one no go. Is Downtown has proved pretty frosty for both sides here in the last few minutes. Brooks maintaining possession even though he lost his footing. Klum gets the play from the sideline. 145 remaining in the third quarter. Here is Young from downtown and the 20th Century Lanes three-pointer is good. Mustangs had missed their last eight three-point field goal attempts before that one. Here's Pretty and he hits 20th Century Lanes three-pointer as well. A nice answer by the T-Birds, stopping a 7-0 Allen East run. Yeah, here the Mustangs just trying to claw their way back into the game. They got it to 14, then the big three-point field goal. Now here's Young. Klum has it top of the key.
Looking for some space to go underneath and not finding a lot. Hensley passes that one off, and he is fouled. I think they're going to get Quatman for that one. They will. That's his second. The, the first step is so important when you want to beat your uh, opponent on dribble drive penetration. He got that first step that time and forced the foul. Mustangs with the basketball, 46 seconds. And Brooks saved that one from going out of bounds, looks like. Here's Klum driving in, gets it inside to Slusser. That one is short and slaps it away and last touched by Burke. So the Mustangs will retain possession with 36 seconds remaining. Aldis has 13 offensive rebounds in the basketball game. They just had trouble finishing against size. Plum to inbound. Hensley drive and kick. Slusser in trouble on the baseline, and that is going to be another turnover for Allen East. That was set up by really good defense by Billy Burke. He shut the baseline off, and there was nowhere to pass the basketball, and it ended up going out of bounds. Good job, Billy. Pretty gets it across the timeline, 16 seconds. Foster has it. Or I imagine they will hold for last shot, eight seconds now. Parker to Foster, three seconds. Foster puts it up. That shot will not count by Burke. That's three in the books here from LCC. It's a 41. 24 lead for the home team. We're back for the fourth quarter here on WOSN. Welcome back. I want to thank some of our sponsors for tonight's contest. Our instant replay sponsor is Eastside Insurance, dedicated to providing the best insurance protection at the most reasonable price to as many people as possible. And R.G. Jones Excavating, our free throw sponsor tonight, serving your excavating needs for over 50 years. Visit R.G. Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavation project for your home or business. Good luck to all area athletes and go Mustangs. At least now nine of 31 from two point range, two for 11 from outside the arc. They are 0 for 5 from the free throw line. LCC 9 of 19 from the two-point range, 6 of 23 from three-point land. They are 5 of 6 at the free throw line. Allen East leads in rebounding 29-28. 13 of their rebounds are offensive. 10 of the 28 rebounds for LCC are offensive. The Thunderbirds have turned over just five times, and Allen East has turned over 10. All right. Thank you, Mark Shine. Patrick Hamler along with you here for the fourth quarter, final quarter of this matchup. Allen East trailing by 17 to the home team T-Birds. Allen East held the T-Birds to just seven or eight points in the quarter, but they were only able to score seven. And that one is going to stay down here with Allen East. And you look at the stats and you know sometimes basketball is not much more complicated than don't turn the ball over and make your shots. Good inbounds play, gets them a basket. They get that one to go in, and that's something that Allen East has struggled pretty mightily with tonight. Deacon Jones got a cut to the basket on the out-of-bounds play and a nice pass and a score. Deeper had quarter scores of 15, 18, and 8. Allen East 7, 7, uh, 7, 10, and 7. And we're going to have a foul here on the floor. That's going to be against Helzer. That's his fourth. And it looks like Helzer is going to stay in. Billy Burke to the line now. There's R.D. Jones free throw. In and out. Billy Burke has just two points right now, but he has really affected the basketball game. His size on the interior has made it difficult for Allen East to get shots. He's rebounded at both ends of the floor. His contributions have not necessarily been offensively tonight, but other things he has done for his team. Now he has three points. R.G. Jones' free throw is good.
Here's Jones from downtown. That one off the front iron. Now here's Pretty running the floor. Stops. Foster has it. Now Parker, top of the key. Pretty all alone for three. And that 20th Century Lanes three-pointer is up and in. And a Metzger Financial Services timeout. 6.55 to go in the game. It's a 19-point lead for LCC here on WOSN. Tonight's three-point sponsor is 20th Century Lanes. There's something for everyone at 20th Century Lanes. Proud supporter of all Lima area athletes. Off the pretty three-pointer for LCC, a 45-26 lead for the T-Birds on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Scoreboard. Jordan Pretty really loves the baseline jump shot with his three-point effort. He's very smooth there, and when he catches the pass, he's very confident in how he goes up and strokes the basketball. He's had a really good offensive night, and coach wanted to get some different guys in the game. That was why that timeout was taken. And Pretty only a sophomore. So LCC fans are going to get to see him for another couple of years as the ball poked away by Malachi Talbert. Quatman brings it up now back into the hands of Talbert. LCC's next basketball game will be on the 19th. They go to Bath. And then before we hit the Christmas holidays, they will go, they will play Van Wert here on the 22nd of December. Trying to get some more games in before Christmas. And foul going back the other way. Good rebounding position that time. And on the back foul by Angelo Collins. We have a winner the uh, the Alanis Mustangs on the 17th, they will be a part of the Quincy a classic downtown at Lima Senior. They will play Thurgood Marshall on the 17th, the 19th of December. They go to Wapak, and then their final game before the Christmas break is the 22nd with Corey Ross at home. Three-pointer on the way by Hunter Williams. No good. Second chance opportunity not there. Now Brooks maintaining possession for Allen East. And the Mustangs have had their opportunities tonight as Klum takes that one in strong. They're going to wave the basket off. The foul was on the floor. Uh, they just haven't been able to put him down. Yeah, he would turn the corner that time, was headed to the rim when the contact occurred. The rule book says if you're gathering yourself to shoot, then you go to the free throw line. He had not reached that particular point yet. Foul called on Drew Pester as Jones connects with the 20th Century Lanes three-pointer. Jones, 5'9", sophomore. Working it. Here's Collins now into the hands of Talbert. And Judy thought about the three, passes it off to Quatman. Almost three minutes gone by here in the fourth quarter. A little trap action. That's going to stay down here at LCC. Clum and Hunter Williams. Got him pinned on the baseline, and one of them hit the ball out of bounds. So Parker Judy will be the inbounder. Substitution is Logan Helzer will check in for Hunter Williams for the Mustangs. And Trey Hensley will come back in for Brady Brooks. Helzer back in with four fouls. And almost picked up number five right there. And Collins strong to the bucket and puts it in. LCC has taken only 20 two-point field goal attempts tonight. They've made half of them. Here's Helzer working inside. That one off the mark. Jones saves it. I appreciate how hard the Mustangs have worked on the offensive glass being outsized this evening. Here's Helzer working inside off the glass and in. Set up on a really nice pass from Klum. Drew the defense to him and that'll be just the sixth LCC turnover tonight. With four and a half to go here in the quarter. So Mustangs get it back and down 16 with 428 remaining. Not impossible, but certainly the clock not 
in the favor of the Mustangs at this point, and they're going to have to start heating up from downtown and on the court at all if they want to try and come back in this one. That three-pointer no good. And we'll also be interested to see if LCC slows it down here a little bit. Quatman pulls up, that shot short. That was a nice move by Quatman. Yep. The shot was a bit short, but it was a nice move. And ball fake and go. Klum passes it off, Jones saves it. Now Klum working against Quatman, has it poked away, and Quatman comes up with it. Ethan Young working hard against Quatman. Here's the kick out. This is to Pester. Going inside to Collins. Collins working against Klum. Outside, here's Pester from downtown. No good. Good opportunity for a lot of bench players to get time on the floor here. Obviously gives them a chance to improve some and Coach Powell a chance to evaluate them. Without a doubt, here is Hensley from downtown. That shot no good. Under the three minute mark here in the fourth quarter. 16 point lead for Lima Central Catholic. And looks like they are on Step their on way. The sideline, yeah. Potman was trying to turn the corner on the sideline. The defense was pretty good, and he stepped on the sideline before he threw the cross-court pass. So Allen East basketball, Clum brings it across the timeline. Here's Jones from downtown, and just has not found the range on those tonight. That one poked yeah. away, and they'll Call the foul. Club had a shot at it. The ball was out in front of the offensive player. He got hand instead of ball. And eventually got to the ball, but the foul was called before that. We're going to take a quick break and come right back. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back, our timeout sponsor, Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Clump got called for a hold. That's his third foul. Third for Allen East, so getting closer to the automatic free throw time is that shot by Pester is no good. Contested at the rim. Brooks, he puts up a three-pointer. That one is no good. Collins fouled by Brooks. Play's gotten a little sloppy here in the last few minutes. That's the fourth team foul of the fourth quarter, so Thunderbirds were shooting the two-shot foul after any more fouls created by the Mustangs. Indeed they will. Under two minutes to go in this one. T-Birds well on their way to another win. Make them 3-0 and on the young season. Allen East about to fall to 1-1. One one. Will be the foul that will send them to the free throw line as they got very patient with that possession. I've been very impressed with how Coach Powell, and I think just three weeks of practice because of how the football season extended, but how well he's, he's schooled his team on how they're going to play defensively. You know, they gave up 31 last week to Bath and 42 to a talented Shawnee team. We're looking at 31 right here. Pester makes the free throw. That R.G. Jones free throw was good. And, you know, that's one of the questions is how – how quickly is a new coach going to be able to get his system implemented? And I'm sure that 
Coach Powell probably doesn't think, hey, it's it's in, it's perfect, it's ready to go. But if you're an LCC fan, you have to like a lot of what you've seen tonight from the T-Birds. That 20th Century Lanes three-pointer up and good by Ethan Young. I had a conversation this week, uh, Patrick, with, with some coaches, and I asked Coach Powell this evening as well, what's harder to put in as a brand new coach, offense or defense? And everybody's said offense, and, and there are lots of very reasons, one of which is getting them to understand your system and where people are open is harder than how to close people off defensively. Yep. But also the coach has to figure out where are my best scoring opportunities? Well, where are my own players? He has to figure out how to, what their strengths are and then you know figure out how to get them the ball in those particular areas. Coach has done a nice job as they're now, what, uh, 10 of 12 the free throw line yeah. tonight too. And a lot of that, and you as a former coach know this better than anyone, that, that that takes time and you have to figure all that stuff out. And sometimes it takes over the course of a season before you really have a good feel on what all those guys are doing. Ethan Young with another 20th Century Lanes three-pointer. 51-37. So Allen East able to hit a couple of three-pointers late, but not going to be enough here tonight as LCC is going to come away with the victory as the foul committed. We'll take one more timeout. We'll be right back here on WOSN. Welcome back, 34.6 seconds remaining, a 51-37 lead with Matthew Quatman at the line to shoot the RD Jones free throws and hits the first. It's a 15 point game, Patrick. It seems a lot bigger than that. It seems like the, the you know, LCC has played better than just having a 15 point lead this evening. Now 16. Second RD Jones free throw is good. Yeah, it does feel like that it really should be a little bit more than 15 as the foul on, I well, think they called Quatman on. Yeah, they called well, Quatman. This is something second. we noticed a week ago with uh, LCC. Not only does they defend very well, but they don't foul very much. That's just the, the second foul of this quarter. They don't turn the ball over. They don't foul very much. It's been a, a well-schooled team for this early in the season. Brooks from way downtown, no good. Collins brings it up the floor, and we'll see what they do here with 16 seconds. It looks like that they might just wind this one down as that is going to wrap up basketball action here from Air Gymnasium on Bob Segerson Court. It's going to be a 53-37 victory for LCC tonight. We're back to wrap this one up when we return here on WOSN. Welcome back, final here. It is 53-37, LCC with the win as we take a look at the uh, final stats, Mark Schein. Well, Allen East actually took 57 shots in the basketball game, and, and that's 13 more, or 11 more, excuse me, than uh, LCC did. Allen East was 10 of 36 from two-point range. They were five of 21 from three. They did not make any of their five free throws this evening. On the other side, LCC, 10 of 22 from two-point range, seven of 24 from distance. They were 12 of 14 from the free throw line. Rebounding went to Allen East tonight, 37-33, mostly because they had 17 offensive rebounds, and Allen East turned it over 12 times to just seven for Lima Central Catholic. Add a couple of LCC runs in there, a 15 to nothing and 16 to eight in the first and second quarters, and that's difficult to overcome no matter who you are. That brings us our final 53 to 37. Want to thank our uh, staff tonight, Abby Beck, Megan Sherrick, for helping us out with the audio and the video as that's going to wrap things up here tonight from Bob Segerson Court, the final one more time. 53-37, Lima Central Catholic over Allen East. For Mark Shine and our entire WOSN staff, I'm Patrick Hamler saying so long, everyone, from Lima.